All right, what is up my peeps? Joshua Smithy with another GSD Mode Podcast Real Estate Tip, where every single week I come to you delivering different tips, tactics, and strategies to help you get shit done inside your real estate business and help you ensure that you are crushing and dominating your overall real estate goals. All right, so today I'm here to break down the seven best now business lead generation strategies here for 2024. Look, obviously the market's changed a lot. We've seen a lot of shifts and changes. 2023 was the lowest transaction volume that we've seen in over 30 years. So about the lowest as we've seen since 1995, but we got 27% more people, most unaffordable time to be alive in the United States recorded history, most at or close to the most unaffordable real estate market to ever exist. So look, we've got a lot less people that are willing or able to transact. We've got a hell of a lot more agents than 30 years ago. So it's really the most competitive landscape that we've ever seen for those of us, me and you, that are in the trenches, you know, in here in the real estate space, whether an agent, team leader, broker, owner, like it's some gnarly shit that we're seeing out there. Now, with that being said, this does not mean your real estate business needs to be down. This does not mean that your real estate business doesn't need to be growing. Look, real estate is always selling, always trading hands, always has, always will. There is no such thing as a good market or a bad market. It's our job as real estate professionals to identify whom the market is best for, pivot, shift, adapt accordingly to whom the market is best for. And then boom, your business continues to grow and scale regardless of the damn market. Too many people are out there blaming the market. Oh, my business is down because of interest rates. Oh, my business is down because there's just nobody buying, nobody selling. It's all just bullshit, right? Your business is down because you have not adapted your strategy accordingly. You don't have the fundamentals in place. Like your business is only down for those of you that it is down. And I'm not saying this to be a jerk. I'm saying this because I truly genuinely care about you. But if you don't change your mental philosophy and how you operate, like you're, you're, if you're being a victim, your business is never going to turn around. But your business is down because of you and only you, right? Um, and that's the hard truth of the, of the fact. But there's just different things that work in different markets. So we're going to go through again and cover the, the, I don't know, I got one hand up, seven, you know, best now lead gen strategies here for 2024 because shit's done. You know, what's working today is different than what worked, you know, two or two, three, four or five years ago, right? And, and you're going to experience this throughout your career. You need to get damn good at the ability. If you want to have, when I say you got to get damn good, if you want to, have the ability to continue to grow and scale your real estate business year after year for the longevity of your career. You got to get good at reading markets. You got to get good because like what worked yesterday may not work tomorrow. These seven strategies I'm coming with you today are crushing it, are freaking murdering it right now uh, uh, in this market. But hey, like I'm not naive. I understand that, hey, these might not be great niches 12 months from now, 24 months from now. I got to keep my eyes open, man. I got to stay aware of, of this stuff, right? Okay, so let's jump into this. So first off, how, how am I defining long-term versus short-term? Because some of you might be listening to this and be like, oh, Josh, dude, you're wrong. YouTube is the best lead gen strategy to go out there and murder. Okay, maybe. Yeah, right. Maybe for you in your situation and scenario for you, sure. But that is a long-term strategy regardless. We are talking about short term. Like if you need money now, if you need to scale up now, if you want to turn your real estate business around, your team around, your brokerage around, your own personal real estate business around, we're talking about now money, not shit that is nine, 10, 12 months, 24 months down the road, right? So when we look at, let's break down long-term strategy. And again, these are all effective things, but we got to really understand and pay attention to timelines. So I'm talking to you guys right now that want to turn your, you know, turn things around or scale super fast, right? So we got to know what are the, what are the strategies to scale fast? And then, Hey, what are other strategies that might be highly effective, but they're long-term strategies. So long-term and how I define long-term is, you know, that's like six plus months out, right? So, and, and not saying that all of these are six plus, I mean, some of these might be six months, some might be 12 months, some might be longer, but okay. Like trying to grow your business off of sphere of influence, repeat referral business. That is a long game, man. You know, like, okay, you might have a huge, like, be brand new to the business. You might know everybody be so connected and you might hit some immediate deals, you know, but to grow that year after year, like to grow your business by 20% repeat referral business year after year. I mean, that shit, it takes forever, you know, right? Cause we got to be adding new people. And so that's a longer term strategy, right? So it's great. And I'm going to focus the hell on that too. Cause when I talk about all these new business strategies, people will be like, oh, the best way to grow your business, Josh, is long term, you know, or, or sorry, repeat referral business. And hey, I'm not saying that you are wrong, right? Like, hey, I want to, I mean, that, that ends up being the foundation long term. 
Yeah, right. Like, hey, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this a long time. So yeah, I'm doing several hundred you know, closings a year through past client repeat referral business collectively as a team. But I've been doing this forever, man. I'm old as fuck. You know, right? I've been doing this since 2005. You know, that's okay. When I jumped into the business brand new and wanted to go out there and pop 52 deals my first year, one a week, I fell short of that and closed 48, not 52. You know, um, but I had, and I just moved 2,000 miles away from where I grew up. I didn't know anybody. Like I had to go after new strategies. So again, we just, we got to, you know, break this down, right? So, um, um, so we understand this, right? Because so, people will tell you a lot of shit. Oh, this is the best. This is the best. But again, you got to pay attention to timeline. Okay. So, you know, sphere of influence, repeat referral business, your you, yeah, YouTube channel. Great. Not for everybody, right? YouTube is not great for everybody. I can tell you guys this right now. YouTube is not great for everybody. People will tell you that it is, but it is not. You know, like I know some people in certain markets that do everything right and get very low results because of the market that they're in. You know, YouTube is great for, you know, bigger metro areas, lots of really low areas, but it is not great for everybody. But, it, you know, for, for most, it can be pretty, pretty good. And for some certain markets, it can be fantastic. But again, long-term strategy, you do everything right. You don't screw up a damn thing. It's going to take nine to 12 months before you start seeing good, consistent business there. Okay. Social media organic, right? Oh, I'm going to go out there and start doing all these reels and, and shorts or sorry, reels, you know, stories, posts. You know, I'm going to blow up my social media. Yeah, cool. You And you will. And I do those things too, you know, over time, but it's a long game, right? Um, okay. Paid social media ads, pay, uh, pay-per-click ads. So your Google pay-per-click, your social media ads. Yeah, right. I get people reaching out to me all the time. Man, I want to scale this. Like I want to just blow this up. I'm going to start dumping all this money into PPC or, you know, I'm like, look, okay, cool. But that's a long-term strategy. Like if you started investing in this right now, as we're entering or getting close to entering February of, of 2023 or 2024, sorry, shit, 2024. Um, uh, it's like, okay, you might start popping some good deals. You know, like when I say consistent, you know, like you might get lucky and pop a good deal here and there, but I'm talking about consistent, like, let's just say, you know, two, three, 4% conversion rates. Like that's going to take about a year to hit with that. Right. So be, you know, that's again, long-term strategy. Okay. Things like geo farming, long-term strategy. So we got to understand the difference between long-term and short-term. So today I'm covering, what is the best short-term strategy? Now, I know you might be like, Josh, get you just get to the fucking point. But this is important because you're going to, like in the information age that we are in, we are pulled a thousand different directions. You got everybody coming at you. It's a war for your attention. Everybody's coming at you telling, oh, this is the best thing. This is the best thing. This is the best thing. We get overwhelmed and then we're like, what the fuck? What, what do we focus on? Time out. Like my mind is about ready to pop off, you know, right? Like pop because I got all these different things coming at me. Well, you got to be able to break down and, and, and you got to, you got to be able to use your brain on this stuff. Okay. Well, based on my scenario, my situation, what I'm trying to accomplish, which ones make sense, right? Cause everything works. Nothing doesn't, you know, right. We got to just make sure we're deploying it right. But is that the right thing for you to even deploy at this moment inside your business? So how I define short-term is money in your hand within 90 to 120 days. Unfortunately in real estate, there's nothing that's overnight, right? Um, you know, let's just say you go out there and you get a listing or you get a buyer to, yeah, you got to go out there and find them a property, close on that property, you know, right? So, you know, same thing on the listing side, you got to list it, you got to do all this stuff. So nothing, nothing's immediate, right? In, in this business. Sorry, getting a little warm here. That's peel off my hoodie. hoodie. Um, all right, so then from there, so short-term is what I define as, okay, from I take actions today, and the actions that I'm taking today are directly leading to me having a not just a client, but a closing and a commission check in my hand within the next 90 to 120 days. All right, so now there's a few really important things here that I want to dial in here before we get into these, these actual seven things. And you hear me talk about this all the time. So we're gonna I'm gonna break down today what these seven things are. So we're gonna talk about strategy. So strategy is just whom like what the overall source is, whom we are targeting, right? Um, but then from there, strategy alone is not enough. You got to make sure then to have the right process and the right skill set to maximize conversions per each one of these. And each one of these is going to require a different process and skill set. So then from there, when I talk about these being the seven best now business strategies, this is assuming that you have the fundamentals in place. You got your tracking system in place. So you're able to track and see what's working, what's not working, what areas of, of the funnel are you having bottlenecks in? You know, I was having a conversation with a dude the other day 
you know, that was getting like 3% call to, to, to conversation ratios. And he's working his ass off every day. But I'm like, dude, like you need to be at 10% or greater. There's only three things to do that are very simple to fix that. We can have that fixed within about five minutes and you will 3X your results in the same amount of time. Yeah, right. So, but if we weren't tracking numbers, we don't know what, what our overall conversions are. We can't make our business predictable. We don't know. So think of tracking is almost like it allows you to know the vital signs of your business. You go to the doctor, not film well, they're going to do a bunch of different vital signs to see, you know, like where you're at and, and, and pinpoint where there's, you know, a red flag, right? So you got your tracking system in place. You got your CRM in place and you, you've dialed that and you understand that. Of course, you got your listing presentation, buyer consultations in place and assuming that you're converting at 90% greater with those. So you got a world-class buyer and con cons listing presentation, buyer consultation in place to, again, you should be converting 90% or greater of the appointments you go on into clients. Because look, we can go do all this shit all day long but if once we get to the table, if we can't convert, like we just wasted a bunch of time. So you got to have these fundamentals in place. Um, then, of course, you're just overall systems and processes. Like you got to know, you know, like just how to go out there and service your clients, have your systems process. Like assuming you got the fundamentals in place, right? Um, which unfortunately, like 95, 90, uh, gosh, probably 99% of, you know, uh, our, our industry doesn't have these in place. I know you guys do because you're watching this podcast and you're, you're, you're serious. You guys are professionals. The vast majority of our industry is filled with amateurs that just wing this, that, that don't treat their business as a business, but I know you guys are. And, and for some of you that are maybe new to the podcast or you're just, or maybe you've been listening for a while, but you haven't had your shit together. Like, okay, get your shit together. If you are not treating your business as a business, if you're not operating as a true professional, and by a true professional, I'm not talking about the way that you dress. I'm talking about treating your business as a business and having those fundamentals in place. Like none of this other shit matters, right? Okay, so assuming that you have those things in, now we're going to break down the seven uh, best now business lead sources. Now, real quick, before we jump into this, if you are a real estate agent, if you are a team leader, if you are a brokerage owner, and your business is not exactly where you want it to be, maybe your business has declined, maybe it's stagnant, maybe it's growing, just not at the pace that you want it to grow at, it's like you're operating down here, but you know your true potential is up here. You just do not know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. I invite you to schedule a 100% free, 100% zero pressure Zoom coaching call with me personally. It's going to be an hour-long Zoom call. We're going to break down where your business is at, where your 12-month goals are, what your long-term goals are, what you're currently doing, what your biggest obstacles and resistance points are. Then from there, I'm going to map out. So by the end of this call, you know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient, profitable manner possible. So again, if you're stuck and this is 100% free, usually I charge a thousand dollars an hour for these, but for all you amazing, all my amazing GSD Mo peeps that have supported me for so much over the years, this is something that I'm doing. I don't know how long I'll be able to continue doing these. Yeah. You know, right now I'm doing a, a slow days for a busy days, about eight to nine hours of these a day to help you guys get dialed in. So if you want my help, this is a chance for you. And it might be a very limited chance, but this is a chance for you to have a 100% free and again, like it's one, it's not just it's free, zero pressure. You had somebody on the other day, it's like, oh my God, you're actually giving me value. I'm like, yeah, this is a free coaching call. Like I'm here to dial in, here to, to pour into it and here to make sure you know exactly what to do. So you have my word. This is not some bait and switch bullshit. Like I'm going to pour into you. I'm going to make sure you know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. So if you don't know how to, how to dial that in, if you don't know what to do day in and day out, what exactly to specifically focus on to get from where you're at to where you want to go, then book this call. Right. So you can do that at www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. Once you sign up, there's going to be an important video to watch that's going to help you prep for the call. Make sure you watch that. Watch the whole thing in entirety. Um, so you like, we can have the most success together on that call. Okay. So now we're jumping in again into the seven best uh, new business overall strategies. So I'm going to start with buyers and then we're going to transition to sellers. And again, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of each. Okay. So, so for again, now business commission check 90 to 120 days. All right. So let's first start off with open houses, right? Open houses are great. Always been great. Always are great, but you've got to, especially in this market, you've got to be very specific with the properties you're doing open houses on. So I look at this, like that movie, Field of dreams. If you've ever seen that, right? It's like, okay, in the end movie, like, oh, build it and they will come. Okay. Do your open house on the properties that are in demand price points, features, you know, that neighborhoods, areas that are in demand right now that people want, that people are buying, that people are willing and able to buy are buying in your marketplace. 
So don't just go out there and do random open houses on any open house because you just got an open house. You know, be very specific. 90% of your success with open house. Yeah, we got, you know, we got to make sure that we're nailing the sign in process. We got to make sure that we're nailing the tour process, you know, and then at the end of the tour, that should then transition effectively into the appointment set. And then, okay, then after that, we got a thousand day follow up protocol process. Like all of those things need to come together to ensure that you're converting, you know, one out of 10 leads from your open house. You know, however, all those things come together. But if you got the wrong property, you're going to have a lot lesser results. So looking at this, okay, based on the market right now, what's selling? What are the price points? Who's buying? What is it that they want? What are those neighborhoods? What are those home features? What are, you know, like I'm very targeted on that with, okay, this is my storefront where I get the highest probability of people coming in that, that, uh, uh, that have, that are able and willing to buy in this marketplace. So just an example, in my market right now, it's like, okay, if you're not making, you know, 150 G's a year as, as, a, as a family, it's very difficult to go out there and buy. And at least the areas that I specialize in within, you know, my market's huge, but the areas that I work, the areas that I specialize, you know, really work in that 600 to million dollar price point. Um, um, so then with that, okay, like I'm looking at my target buyer client in this market is 40 to 55 year old married couples. This is like their last kind of move up purchase of their lifetime. They've got the income to do it. You know, they've got the, the means to do it. They want to do it. They've got, you know, the, the, the urgency to do it, you know? So, okay. Like I, I'm doing open houses in areas and on types of properties that I know that they want, right? Fill the dreams, right? Like build it and they will come Do the open house on the property that you have the highest probability of your ideal client walking through that front door. Boom. You know, you're going to go out there and have success with it. So pros are, okay. These are very, it's very high converting. It's, it's immediate. You know, and, and again, okay, if I get 10 people through and I convert one, okay, those other nine aren't going to do something, but it's just, this is a numbers game. You're never going to have hundred percent conversion, but 10, like, think about that 10% conversions. So 10 people coming through, you're converting one dude, like you're crushing them with open houses, you know? So what is, so that's the pro, like the pro is you're immediately face-to-face -face with the lead. I don't know any other sources that you're really immediately face-to-face -face with a lead um, that convert at a very high level. If you know what the fuck you're doing, right. Um, uh, you know, through that, that's why I said, it's not just, you know, we're talking about strategies today. So picking and identifying, you know, the best target for you. Uh, so now, you know, where the target of where to aim that arrow, but then you got to have the process and the skill set. So like, you got to know how to aim that arrow. You got to know how to shoot. You got to, you know, so, so strategy, you got strategy, process, skill set. Right. Like we're just talking strategy, strategy day. Now you got to dial in, make sure you got the right exact process and you got the right skill set to convert these. Otherwise, none of it matters if those three things don't come together. OK, so the con with open houses is, yeah, you know, you're, you're spending hours of the weekend. Yeah, it's set up. Um, um, but the bigger con than that, because like that's just don't be lazy. Right. Um, so then the bigger con to that, though, is you can't control 100%, you can do things that can allow you to increase traffic and increase the number of leads, but it's not fully in your control, right? So, you know, it's, it's a little bit of, yeah, there's a way to be intentional and to play offense with it, but it's still kind of a defensive passive strategy because it's relying on how many people come in or if the weather's shitty and it's pouring, you know, right? Like, you know, we're, there, there's some elements where we lack control, like some of these other strategies it's like, okay, I know for a fact, okay, based on X, Y, Z, let's just say listing sources. Okay. I do X amount of dials every single day, X amount of conversations every day. It's going to equate to X amount of listings like clockwork. That's fully controllable. So this isn't necessarily as controllable. You know, like I might have 14 couples through 14 leads, you know, an open house today. And then next weekend I might have five, you know, right? Like I can't fully control that. So that's the con. Okay, um, the next buyer lead source that's crushing it right now is what I call intent online based lead gen, right? Um, so this is going to be, I'm just going to use Zillow, um, uh, but you got, of course, you got Zillow, you got Realtor.com, you got Trulia. You have a Z Zillow, I'll use Zillow because they're the juggernaut. Why is this such a great lead source right now? now I'm not saying it's right for you because I'm going to go through the pros and cons of this, you know, um, but it's such a great lead source right now in 2024 overall because look, if people are complete, like if they're checked out, right? Um, of this marketplace, like meaning they can't afford, they can't participate. Okay. They're probably not going to sites like Zillow to waste time to go out there and look at properties. Just like they're probably not going through open houses, you know? Um, uh, but then from there, they're, may, they might be just be dreaming, but they're definitely not going to inquire on that property, you know? Um, so we're talking about, you know, I mean, these are leads and why, why I call this an intent based, 
versus like pay-per-click or like, let's just say Facebook ads, pay Facebook ads. I call those disruptive online lead gen marketing sources, right? So like, okay, nobody goes to Facebook to look at real estate. It's like they went there to check out the family, to be entertained, to waste time and, and whatever the hell people go to social media for, you know, um, but they definitely didn't go there for real estate. Somehow we got their ad, kind of bait and switched them, kind of conned them and, uh, you know, uh, grabbing their attention, getting the opt in. They're far down the funnel, you know, leads where, okay, when somebody goes to Zillow, they're going there with intent. Like we all know why somebody would go to Zillow, right? Then from there, when they're inquiring, it's really replaced the modern day sign call. So, you know, um, when we talk about average Zillow lead, to closing, it's about four months, you know, on, on average, um, it's not uncommon, you know, like when we have some, like a new agent, you know, join our Zillow department here internally within my real estate company. Um, you know, usually within their first week or two, they've, they've got Zillow clients that are already under contract, you know, and that's not uncommon. I mean, that's like the, the norm, not the exception, you know, right? Like that's what's normal. Like if they're following the process and they take the time to have the right skill sets and shit, like, you know, a lot of times we get somebody on a contract in the first week of being on the team with Zillow. These are quick. Yeah. Right. Um, so those are the pros, right? The con, there's a couple cons. Number one, um, uh, depending on what your market is, whether you have Zillow flex or premier, you know, it, it, it can be expensive. Um, now the ROI can be great if you have your shit together. But if you don't have your shit together, you, 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 it's going to be painful, right? Because it is an expensive lead source. Um, but it's expensive for a reason because these people are hot to trot, right? Um, um, but you sometimes, okay, like one of the cons is, is you, you're not in control of, okay, like your zip codes might already be bought up. Or, or once you're buying those up and you want to expand it, you might be get blocked from being able to expand because there's only so many leads, so many territories. You know, if you're in a market like mine, where you, it's only Zillow Flex, like, okay, this might not even be a reality for you to get in unless you join a team like mine. You know, right? Um, that has a Zillow Flex account if you're in a Zillow Flex market like ours. You know, right? Um, um, you know, so then from there, just kind of like open houses is you're not 100% in control. You know, Zillow can't necessarily control. Now, I mean, they do a damn good job at it, but they can't necessarily fully control how many people inquire you know, because based on the market, like obviously with a dip in the market, like we've seen over the last, you know, 24 months, there might be less lead flow overall, you know, a little bit less traffic hitting the site, a little less lead flow. So it's not something that is, again, this is kind of one of those mixes, just like open houses where, you know, it's somewhat of a, a passive defensive source, you know, but we can do intentional playing offensive, you know, offense with the opportunities that we get to maximize on that. So there's, there's some element of control that we just don't have, you know, with this source. The other con is you have to be extremely reactive. This is why when I get like people hear the fact that, okay, like I do a lot of Zillow, you know, internally, like we have our Zillow department, my partner, Scott runs and, and do that. We do a lot of business in that department, Scott and his, you know, these guys are crushing it in that department. You know, so people come back, well, Josh, you do a lot of Zillow. Um, um, you know, I, I should I be doing Zillow too. And I'm like, look, it depends, right? Like if you're an individual agent, because in order to have success with Zillow, like you got to be able to be extremely reactive. Like you got to answer the calls. You got to be willing and able to drop everything and jump on those. If you do not jump on those leads and if you don't have, like aren't in a position to be reactive, you know, it's going to be very difficult. So, okay. For most individual agents, I'd be like, no, this is not a good source for you. Now, if you have a team and have a department, you know, where it's like, okay, we got 20 people in our Zillow or just over 20 agents in our Zillow department that are sitting there doing this all day, essentially for the most part, you know, right. Like they, they might be doing other things, some open houses, some other supplement stuff, but for the most part, right. Like they are sitting here waiting for this thing to ring throughout the day to jam that call. Cause they know the importance of, Hey, we got to have a, a very high answer rate. So it's like, okay, like that, that lead is going to ring 10 agents phones on the team, you know, right. And they're just sitting here like, bam, like trying to snag that and then able to drop everything to go out there. So that department is able to be very reactive. Like if I didn't have a team and have the infrastructure to do that, okay, that wouldn't be a source that I personally would go after because I would know that I can't be reactive enough to get high conversions. Because if you're not getting like at least a four to 5% conversion, it's hard to get any type of a, a decent ROI with this, th these types of sources, you know, but then from there, okay. If you, if you are able to be reactive, it's like, you should be getting at least a 10% conversion rate. You know, if you're damn good, you can be getting, you know, 15% plus conversion rates. You know, like if you're damn good, like 10% should be, yeah, that's, that's good. You know, 4% is kind of, yeah, to me, that's, that's like, that's the minimum, you know, of, of performance, you know, right. That you should be hitting. Um, uh, Cause otherwise you're going to be losing money or, or if you're a team leader, 
and you're providing Zillow leads for your agents. Okay. If you don't have people converting at 4% in your department, like, okay, maybe, maybe they shouldn't be in that department, right? Cause it's too easy to go out there and convert at 10%, you know, or, 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 you know, even again, getting above that 15 to 20% if you have the right process and the right skill set to go out there and convert. So those are the pros and cons of those two sources. And these are, you know, the best. So we got open houses and then we have intent based online lead gen sources, right? So again, I'm using Zillow because it's the juggernaut, but you got other platforms out there like it. Um, but those are, again, because we're, we're talking about now money. Like, okay, I'm doing this thing and I got a paycheck in my hand in the next 90 days. Okay, now let's transition into the listing side. Now there's five overall niches that are hands down converting the best. So if you want to start scaling, you know, getting a listing a, a month, a listing a week, whatever your goals are with that, like th this is shit that you can happen. Like when I always tell my, you know, new coaching clients, I'm like, look, man, if we're attacking this and if you don't have X, you know, let's just say, okay, if you're not getting three listings, you know, or wh whatever their goal is, let's just say it's two listings a month is, is their media goal. Like, okay. If you're not getting at least two listings, like if you're not getting at least two listings a week within 30 days, like there is a big problem here. Yeah. Right. Like, okay. That means you're not following the process. You're not following, you know, like the instructions that I'm giving you, you know, like th this shit happens fast. You know, I got a new coaching client that's, you know, in, in two weeks, you know, five deals on a contract, right. Within two weeks. Yeah. You know, right. Just switch up strategy. Bam. Just going. Now the next problem is, okay, how do I freaking manage all these deals on a contract plus this new stuff? That's a great problem now. Okay. Now we solve that next problem. You know, so this shit is fast, right? So we got five overall niches that are hitting best right now in this current market, current climate that we're in. So you got FISBOs, you got expireds, you got absentee owners, we got NODs, and then we got divorces. So I'm going to go through each of these pros and cons. All right. So with for sale by owners, right? Um, so well, for sale, I'm just gonna throw for sale by owners and expires in the same bucket, even though you know, of course the scripting and timeline psychology is totally different. So each one of these is gonna be a different process and a different skill set. When I talk about skill set, that's you know how well we're able to you know script and deliver our scripting and have effective conversations, convert those into appointments. So I mean they're they're you know totally different beasts when it comes to that. But when it comes to the pros and cons, they're the same. Yeah, right. Okay. These are great listing sources for now immediate listing business. The con is, okay, you're going to have 40, 50, 60 other agents in your marketplace attacking these same strategy, these same sources, these, these same niches. So if your process and your skill set is not far better, far inferior or superior than your competitors, okay, you are going to have low conversions, right? So when I talk about low conversions, I'm talking, okay, like Fizbo's, you should be converting at 8%. You know, like, like, you know, we're like, you know, maybe even upwards of 10%, but 8% would be, you know, the target that, I'd, you know, like if you were internally with me, you know, my real estate company or coaching client of mine, that's the target I want you, you know, aiming for and striving for, you know, if you're getting below that, okay, we know something's wrong with your process or skill set. Okay. Then expires. Okay. 6% conversion. When I say, when I'm talking about these conversions, I'm talking about on the listing side, when I was talking about uh, Zillow and, and open houses, that's overall funnel. Yeah. Right. Like, 10 leads, one closing, right? When I'm talking about these conversions here specifically to the list side, I'm talking about conversation to listing taken rate, right? Um, um, you know, so at a 10 or so 8% conversation to listing taken rate, you know, at a minimum with FISBOs, 6% with expireds. If you're not hitting those, okay, we know that your skill set and your process is off, right? But average is like, you know, half of 1% or, or below that. Because they're doing the same shit everybody else is doing. Yeah, right. They have low, low skill set, bad process. You know, right. So just like to, they're just having to exhaust so much energy and effort when they could 10 or 20 X that by having the right process and skill set. So that's what you got to be prepared for with those. Okay. So then we got absentee owners. Now, then absentee owners is going to be kind of three sub niches. You got your long term buying holds. You got your short term vacation rentals, and then you have kind of your you know people that have this as a vacation home that just stay there part of the year. All three of those are great niches right now because they're all experiencing pain with their current living situation, and and that's the key to now business. The pain of the current living situation needs to outweigh the pain of the change, otherwise they're not going to do the things necessary to go out there and make the change. This is why circle prospecting sucks in this market because it's like okay they may want to move. But the pain of going out there and, and buying something new and going from a 3% rate to a 7% rate is more painful than staying and dealing with the, the shit they're unhappy about with their current living situation. So if the pain of the, you know, if the pain of our current situation does not outweigh the pain of the change, we're not going to make the necessary changes. And that is true for dude, like you, me, 
fizz, you know, like it, like it doesn't matter what we're buying, selling or what it is, or if it's about you, like, okay. Like you, and you probably experienced this, like when you have so much pain delivered in your own life, where you just get fed up and sick and tired of your current situation, then from there, you usually do something about it. You know, man, I'm so sick and tired of my real estate business struggling. I'm so sick and tired of living paycheck to paycheck, barely being able to breathe, not, not, you know, knowing where the next check's going to come from, having all this anxiety and stress, barely being able to sleep at night. I'm so sick and fucking tired of living this way. And then when you get fed up enough with that, okay, then boom, you start taking different actions, you know, to go out there and do that. But if you're comfortable, you know, or the pain, you know, if the pain isn't great enough, most people don't do the necessary changes. This is why in our own goal setting process, we got to get realistic in our pain, own pain and pleasure, but it comes to the same when we're targeting buyers and sellers. So if the pain of their current living situation does not outweigh the pain of the change they must go through, they're not going to go out there and take action. This is why so many people right now are like, man, I'm working my ass off having conversations with them, but nobody wants to buy. Nobody wants to sell. I'm like, you just got the wrong strategies. You just have shitty strategies based on the economic climate, the market that we are in right now. You got to shift that up to being extremely intentional. That's why I always talk on this podcast about being a sniper, not shotgunning things out. We got to be, have a sniper scope and we're targeting those with the most pain because the most pain equates to urgency, right? So all three of these sub niches have pain. You know, so look at buy and hold long-term, like long-term buy and holds. Okay, rent's coming down for the first time in multiple de- or over a decade. You got tenant evictions skyrocketing right now because of, the, of all the stagflation. You know, I mean, it's the hardest, it's the most unaffordable time to be alive as a U.S. citizen. So, you know, people just can't fucking afford shit anymore. So tenant evictions up 54% from pre-pandemic levels and climbing, climbing, climbing. It's going to get much worse. Like, so you guys know, we're in the beginning phases of this economic winter that we're in. Like shit's going to get worse before it gets better. You know, um, so, okay. You know, tenant having to evict more tenants, rents coming down, all their whole costs are skyrocketing, taxes, insurance, you know, uh, 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 labor, you know, for repairs, you know, HOAs in some cases. So, you know, headaches with tenants, rents coming down, all their hold costs going up and up and up. So again, you're going to have, and so that's just an example of, of, you know, why there's pain for, for, you know, the long-term buy and holds. And then there's pain for the short-term vacation rentals and there's pain for the secondary homeowners. I won't go into those, you know, right now, but you know, they, they're all three, because they're all three going to be clumped in, you know, um, now you got to make sure that you know what to say and when to say and how to say it. Cause they're each one, three of those, you got to speak slightly different to them. Right. Um, um, so, you know, the pro there is again, hot source for this market, lots of pain, you know, if there were to be a con or well, the other pro there is you're, they're not going to be near saturated you know, is Fizbo's and expires. And if there were to be a con with this niche, it would be, you know, when you're talking to long-term buy and holds. Now the other two niches, sub niches, so your short-term vacation rentals and and your secondary homeowners, like those are quick listings, right? But your long-term buy and holds, like meaning, you know, you have a conversation, yeah, I want to sell, but man, I got a tenant in there. They're not out until June, you know, the lease is up, you know, into May, you know, okay, well, we got to you know, keep that communication going, you know, get that, help, you know, that process to make sure that we get that when the tenants out, get that listing, um, um, you know, but then there's, you know, a little bit of delay in getting that listing because of that. Okay. So then we got NODs. These are your pre foreclosures. So about three and a half million homeowners, you know, throughout the U S right now, they're 30 plus days behind on their mortgage payment. About 3% of all mortgages throughout the United States that are in default status right now. Cause again, shit's tough out there, man. You got one in six, Families right now that can't even afford utility payments, 25,000 daily auto repos. Like I said, economic winter is going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah, like shit's going to get ugly. You know, I don't know how ugly, and I'm not saying the real estate market is going to crash. All I know is the stagflation environment that we are in is going to continue for who knows how long. We might be in this mess for a decade where life is getting just imagine how expensive life's got over the net last four years. That just continues for the next decade. What is that going to mean to a lot of people and a lot of families right now for you? That means you need to work your ass off so you can outpace inflation with your real estate business. You know, but this is a niche that's just going to continue to grow, continue to expand. Right. Um, so here, here's the, the pros and cons, right? Immediate, you know, quick, quick listings, not as saturated because real estate agents are lazy, you know, right. They don't want to go out there and process these and, or, and, and right now it's just not even on their radars. I know it's on your guys' radar because you listen to this podcast, but for most, like if I go out there and talk about the rise of pre foreclosures on social media, I get a bunch of hate from realtors. Oh, the market is going to crash. Market's so strong. I'm like, Hey, I'm not saying it's going to crash. The market doesn't need to crash for people to experience hardship. I'm not going to pretend to have a crystal ball. You know, I'm not going to be naive and say that the market won't ever crash. 
eventually, it, yeah, it is going to crash. That could be a year from now. That could be 30 years. I don't freaking know. You know, but market crashes happen. It's a cycle of life. That's like me pretending that, you know, you know, winter never comes. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like you can't just remove January off the calendar. No, you just got to prepare for it. Yeah, right. Like trees don't grow forever. Otherwise, if you're touching the sun, everything goes in cycles. There's ups and downs. You know, I don't know when that's going to be, though, but I'm not saying that it's going to crash right now. I don't have a crystal ball. I have no idea. It's beyond my control. What I do know right now is you have an abundance of people and it's growing every single month that can no longer afford their house payments. These are people that need to sell, need to sell fast. Otherwise, their bad situation is going to get a shit ton worse because they're going to go into foreclosure. This is a great niche to target right now. Here's the con. 50% of these are going to be uh, equity sales right now. The other 50% are going to be short sales. Now, short sales are not difficult. You just got to know what to do. You just got to know how to process them, but they're not difficult. You know, it's like, okay, I got to get this package. I got to submit it to the bank. You know, I get assigned a short sale negotiator. I got to follow up with them and check with them once a week. Yeah, they lose some files. And I got to go back to the seller and get those files. And, you know, and, and it's a longer process, you know, right? It's about a five month, five to six month average process. The reason why they call it short sales is because you have a short payoff. Like, let's just say the property sells, or they, they owe 500, property sells for 450. Um, then after commissions and closing costs and all of that, okay, they got 400,000 left over that is going to the bank for the payoff, but they owe 500. So the bank has to agree to a short payoff, right? That's why it's called a short sale. I said, there's nothing short about these, you know, right? So these can take, you know, five to six months. My quickest ones that I've ever processed in my whole entire career is 40 hours. My longest one was two years. So average is about four to five months. I probably, you know, if, if we start breaking that down, it's probably close to that five month mark, you know, so you got to be prepared for that. But again, the, I know that I, I'm saying that's a con, but the pro is most agents are intimidated by it or they're lazy. So they just don't do it, even though they are not difficult. Right. So, so, um, um, pros and cons there. Okay. Divorces. Right. So, so why is this a pro? Okay. You got people going through a difficult time. That's unfortunate, but during, Divorces always exist, right? What, what's the stat? 50% of marriages end up in a divorce within X amount of time, you know, right? Um, so it's always a niche that's, you know, always strong. But during economically challenging times like we are in right now, they then expand that much more, right? So right now there's just, there's a big uptick in divorces because of what we're seeing right now, what's going on. So then the probability of though that couple staying under the same roof, very low, probability of them needing to sell to split that asset very high. So these are people that typically, you know, need to sell and need to sell fast and get this shit going. So that's a pro. What is a con? You got to do everything twice. Not always, but for the most part, you know, right? Like you just got to plan out. Like meaning two listing presentations, you know, every time you, you need something signed, every time you have an update, it's like you're doing everything twice because usually they're kind of button heads, you know, right. And you got to deal with them twice and they're going through a very tough time, you know, right. So you got to have some empathy and you got to understand that, you know, you might get situations where they're trash talking each other, you know, and it, it, I'm not saying that's, you know, that's fun, but you know, just, just take it with a grain of salt. It is what it is. We all go through tough, challenging times in life. You know, if you, if you mentally frame this stuff, right. It's like, you know, none of this stuff is a big deal, you know, right. When we really think about it, right. But when we allow our emotions to kick in, you know, then those control us. You know, right. So those are the pros and cons. So we got ex FISBOs, expireds, absentee owners, NODs, divorces. Then on the buy side, we talk about open houses and tent based online marketing. So like your Zillows. So those are the seven best now immediate sources, strategies, lead gen strategies to go after business. Now, those are the strategies, like the, the niches, you know, the, the, what do you want to call them? The tactics, the, you know, strategies that we're going to go after. But then from there, again, strategy isn't enough. Strategy is just, you know, what's the method or like, whom are we targeting based on, on that given market, you know, that, that, um, um, you know, has the highest probability of buying and selling within a quick time frame you know, for now immediate business. But then from there, again, make sure that you are nailing the process. So process is what we're doing when we're doing it, how frequently we're doing it and nail the skill set. Skill set is how good we are at doing the things that we do. Cause I'm here to tell you, you can go after all seven of these and just get your teeth kicked in day in and day out. And get zero results if you do not have the process and your skill sets dialed in. I see it every day, man. So when people, when you hear people saying, oh, I tried Zillow and it sucks, it didn't work. Or I tried open house, it sucks. It didn't. Okay. We know that they work. Everything works, nothing doesn't. 
you know, um, um, now there's certain things that work better and certain work quicker, you know, but again, they just sucked at working it. Right. So that's where process and skill set come in. So you got to make sure you nail those. Otherwise, none of this other stuff matters. And I'll end with this. Again, if you guys need some help dialing in your overall strategy plan for your business, it's like if you, if you, you know, you're operating down here. And again, whether your business is declining, like your business might be down. A lot of people's are down right now. The majority of our industry business is down from, from, you know, 2023 was down versus 2022 and so forth. You know, but maybe your business isn't down. Maybe it's staying stagnant, but look, stagnant is down. Because right now with the inflation that we're experiencing, if your business has been staying the same, okay, five short years ago, life was half as expensive as it is today. So if your business is, let's just say you've been making 250 every year for the last five or six years, your business has really gotten cut in half. So if your business is staying the same, that means your business is actually declining. So let's not fool ourselves with that. Right now, your business must be growing at least 10% year over year to keep up with inflation. Better yet, let's make that 20% so you can outpace inflation. Yeah, right. Um, so whether your business is down, whether it's stagnant, whether it's growing, just maybe not growing at the pace that you want, and you just do not know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go, I invite you to schedule a 100% free, 100% zero pressure coaching Zoom call with me. What does zero pressure mean? It means that I am here to help you grow your business. I'm going to give you the strategy plan. We're going to break down where your business is at, what your 12-month goals are, what your long-term goals are. Um. Then from there, what you're currently doing, what your biggest obstacles, what your resistance points are that you're experiencing inside your real estate business. Then from there on that call with you and I, I'm going to map out exactly what I recommend that you do to get from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient timeline possible. So I'm going to eliminate all that guesswork, all that confusion. I'm just going to make sure you know exactly what to focus on. And then from there, if you choose to go out there next you, cool. Yeah, right. But at least you have the roadmap of what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go in the quickest, most effective, efficient timeline possible. So the reason why I say it's no pressure is, you know, I, I, what I've been experiencing is a lot of people when they're showing up for these calls, they're like, man, I was really hesitant about booking this, you know, um, I'm kind of nervous, you know, and I start asking why. And it's like, well, there's all these other coaches that offer these free coaching calls, but the whole thing ends up being a sales pitch. And, and, and then I get no value out of it. I can't even fathom that somebody would do that. It's like, would I, would I offer a seller a free CMA and then not deliver them the CMA? Like that, I, I don't understand why these other coaches operate that way, but it's not how I operate. Like I'm going to pull on you. I'm going to make sure we get you dialed in. This is not some bait and switch, you know, just sales pitch bullshit. Like maybe you've experienced in the past. Now, yes, full disclosure at the very end of this coaching call. So we're going to spend 50 minutes dialing in everything that I just said. And that's plenty of time to get all of those things dialed in so you know exactly what to do to get from where you're at to where you want to go. Last 10 minutes, I spent a couple minutes walking through what my coaching program options are. And if they're a fit for you, cool. And if not, that's okay too. We can still be friends. Look, the vast majority of these calls I do, they don't end up moving forward with my coaching program. I get that. I understand that. But I still pour them and get them dialed in. You know, I get feedback daily from people that didn't move forward with my, my you know, more advanced coaching they're like, oh, you know, share me the results that they're getting and how the real estate's been improving. And, you know, so this isn't some bullshit bait and switch. And the reason why I'm spending time on this is I don't want you to not take this lifeline that I'm giving you out of fear that this is going to be some bait and switch bull crap like maybe you've had experience with in the past. Like if you are struggling, I am here to help you. I got your back 100%. You have my word that this will be extremely powerful. If you jump on this call and it's not extremely powerful, then go out there. You got my permission to go out there and bash me to everybody and go out there and bat, you know, whatever. I'm not going to do that to you. You're know, right. So if you don't know exactly what to do and you don't have 100% full clarity on what you must be executing day in and day out to get from where you're at to where you want to go, then make sure that you schedule this call ASAP. So, cause I'm not going to be able to do these forever. Right. So this is, you know, I've got some time and room in my life right now. This isn't going to be a forever thing. So if you want to take advantage of this, go to www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. www.gsdmode.com forward slash Zoom call. All right, guys, keep crushing it. Truly appreciate you. Truly appreciate your support. And I will talk to you next time. Peace.